Electricity is a powerful resource and in many rural areas in Kenya, people do not have access to it. Up until the mid-20th century, the main mode of electricity production was the use of water. The government then decided to embark on a great project to bring power to the rural masses. There has never been one project that is one billion US dollars anywhere except here. We started uh, operations in this area in the 50s. Uh, what happened at that time is that people see steam here coming naturally out. And people thought immediately, they said, can we drill here to produce steam? Unfortunately, because there was no scientific background, then the wells were not successful. They drilled the wells, but they could not produce commercial steam. So we did exploration of the whole of the Olkaria region and identified the Olkaria 2 area as a priority. So we had Olkaria 2 and Olkaria 3 ready to go. Geologists will study the rock structure and even the, the general uh, soil and rock structure, and they'll tell, they, they will know. They will know from uh, the nature of the rocks, if that is a resource, based on the, 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 the minerals that are found in those rocks, which are associated with high temperatures. Welcome to Geothermal Power Station, Alkaria 1. This is the first uh, geothermal power plant in Africa. It is a plant that is giving 45 megawatts to the national grid. We are now going into the power plant to see how power is generated using steam. This is the Olkariawana control room. This is uh, basically the nerve center of the Olkariawana power station. This is where you see operators sitting here who monitor what is happening in each of the three machines. I showed you earlier gauges that are showing different performances of different parts of the equipment. But this one is a common place. I call it the nerve center. So it has all, the, they can be able to see all the operations, everything that is happening in the power plant from a central uh, position. This is also where they get uh, communication with uh, the national control of Kenya Power. Because as I mentioned to you, you need to dispatch your power into the grid at a certain frequency. And uh, any shifts might uh, destabilize the system. So these people are constantly in communication with the national control of Kenya Power because we are selling to them power. And these are the people also who monitor exactly how much are we giving them on an hourly basis. What you see on my left is a cooling tower. The function of the cooling tower is to cool the water that is used to further cool the steam that comes from the turbine after it has generated power. This water just circulates. It is a circulating cooling water which keeps on circulating all the way from the condenser to the cooling tower. You can see it falling because it's blown by air to cool it down such that when it goes back into the, the, the condenser, it gets it gets it at a lower temperature and it's able to cool the hot steam that has already generated power. We are in the power plant, the powerhouse. This is where you have your turbines and your generators. That is a turbine. And you can feel the vibrations of the turbine because it's rotating. Now that turbine is coupled to a generator. This is a generator. So this is what generates the power. The steam runs the turbine. The turbine is coupled to the generator. And this is where the power is generated. And after that, then it's sent into the national grid. Yeah, 
Adamo is classified as green energy and now the, uh, the impacts that we have, the main impact actually in Giadamo is just the excavation of the site. The gases that comes from here we release to the atmosphere, they are minimal as compared to what comes from say from diesel and coal. And these gases are dispersed into the air, we monitor the concentrations and the concentrations are at a minimum. So what we are really mitigating is the excavations that, uh, that we do on the ground. The water, the, f the liquid, we re-inject into the ground for two purposes. One, it cannot be left on the ground because it is mineralized water. And secondly, you want to make Jadamo sustainable. And that's why you return the fluid into the ground. Uh, as we moved on from 1984 when we were doing the next project, we were already doing EIAs at a time when the Kenya government did not require that we do EIAs for the project, that's the Environment Impact Assessment, we were already doing uh, assessments. So this is an area in Jadamo where we are very sensitive to the environment and we are always together with our stakeholders within the catchment uh, of, of Lake Naivasha and the communities within the areas of Giodamo. We are, we are always having programs to address the environment. When we started in 2008, we had 150 people now the department that I had alone has got 450. We were about 15 engineers, we are now 90 engineers. Right now we have we are dealing with eight rigs, something completely that we have never had before. That is the maximum number of rigs we have ever had is three. And now we have eight. And that's how a billion dollars looks like. <laughs>